Section zero of Pan American Poems, an anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Pan American Poems, an anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Preface. An effort has been made in this book to present to the North American public a small but representative selection from the copious poetical literature of South America, which, it is hoped, may help to increase the growing interest in that subject. The translator must ask for indulgence in the matter of choice, which was guided by many considerations. The greatest difficulty, of course, lay in the abundance of material. It seemed that, as a rule, lyric poems were more likely to interest a foreign reader than extracts from epic or dramatic works, and it will be easily understood that those which lent themselves most readily to translation, and that into a language so different as English, would be preferred to others of equal merit which did not. As a poem must write, or at least start itself, so must a translation. Many fine poems have been written by South Americans in which allusions are made to our own country and our great men, expressing the warmest and most generous admiration. But the compiler has selected but few of these, even among those she was able to procure, for the reason that they would be less attractive to an audience here than those which possessed more southern national feeling, local color, and novelty and variety of subject. Some at least should be mentioned, such as the fine poem on Washington by the leading poetess of Chile, Mercedes Marán de Solar, 1804-1866, from which should be quoted the lines, Washington sin igual, tu gloria en sierra, y por ti confundida al hondo abismo, la opresión huye que tu nombre atiera. Nor should Esteban de Luca of Argentina, 1786 to 1824, be forgotten, in whose poem, The Liberty of Lima, occurs the characteristic passage. Y tú, o oh Boston, en la ardua empresa de vuestra libertad, cuantos furores tuvisteis de arrostrar. For Boston was often used as expressing the national spirit of liberty for our whole country. Nor must there be here omitted the still-living Señor Almafuerte of Argentina, whose powerful voice is even now raising itself on the side of freedom as represented in the cause of the Allies with whom our country has linked herself against the rule of despotism. While the qualities of the poems themselves have been the chief test in making a selection, many of them have chanced to be the productions of men eminent in other ways, especially in Argentina whose pioneer men of letters were leaders also in the great patriotic movements which established her independence. Florencio Varela, who represented the flower of the youth of Buenos Aires, perished by the hand of one of the organized body of assassins employed by the tyrant Rosas. His brother, Juan Cruz Varela, like many of his friends and followers, died in exile in Montevideo. José Marmo, who ranks as Argentina's first classic author, distinguished as novelist, dramatist, and poet, survived the long and weary struggle to live in his native city for years in freedom, peace, and honor. And his centenary has just been celebrated with every tribute that enthusiastic gratitude and admiration could suggest. José Joaquín de Olmedo of Ecuador was not only the civic leader of his people for many eventful years, bearing on his tombstone the title of father of his country, but has celebrated their victories in song. Francisco Acuña de Figueroa was one of the reformers and philanthropists who inspired the spirit of the beloved Banda Oriental, so long the refuge of oppressed patriots from other lands, and now worthily sustaining her high repute under the name of Uruguay. José María de Heredia, the foremost of Cuban poets, was perhaps the earliest in Spanish America to attack the, attract attention abroad, and his poem, The Hurricane, was translated by our own William Cullen Bryant with equal spirit and fidelity. His kinsman of the same name has won a high place among French poets. 
it has fallen to the lot of the small state of nicaragua to produce in ruben dario not only the greatest of spanish-american poets but one whom spain herself now generally hails as the greatest modern poet of his tongue one who perhaps ranked at the time of his death as the greatest modern poet living he spent much of his time as a wanderer but returned to find a grave in his own land of his infinite variety volumes could hardly give an idea certainly not a few translations the translator is happy to say that he was greatly pleased with what she felt to be her very inadequate attempts to render him in english and only his premature and lamented death prevented his giving generous advice and aid however much indifference has been shown to spanish-american literature portuguese-american has met with yet more the want of comprehension of brazilian feeling may be illustrated by a recent proposal seriously made in one of our journals to substitute the term spanish america for south america in speaking of our sister continent regardless of the fact that brazil occupies nearly half its area and that portuguese is spoken in about the same proportion to spanish the immense amount of brazil's territory still and long likely to remain in an undeveloped condition her large native population so long and civilized and her late dependence on european connections due to her monarchical government under a european royal family may account for much of this but she has produced a fine and distinctive literature her principal poet antonio gonzalez diaz was also a scholar of high attainments shown by his long and arduous labors and successful achievements in placing the native tongue of the aborigines of general use throughout the tribes though with some varieties of dialect the tupa on a permanent grammatical and literary basis like our own longfellow he often chose the native legends as subjects of poetry brazil is also still producing a fine and characteristic variety of folk song we must not omit to mention here the careful and comprehensive labors of senhor julio vicuna cifuentes of chile in preserving with great exertion and in a truly imposing form the versions of the old spanish ballads which are still present throughout his country neither must the interesting guacho poetry of argentina be forgotten the brazilian folk songs are more of a class by themselves being still in process of growth among an illiterate people the gypsies ciganos of brazil they are constantly improvised largely as simple quatrains in the gypsy dialect and pass from mouth to mouth with inevitable changes so that in spite of efforts to preserve them but a limited number translated or rather adapted into portuguese find their way into print the one inserted here is probably an outgrowth from the merendin or mulondin from mulon a corpse chanted at the gypsy funerals and was taken from the cancioniero de Sigonos, a compilation which has met with the approval of the gypsies themselves the translator has to thank most warmly many south american friends for generous gifts of books and journals which it would have been difficult perhaps impossible to procure otherwise and can only hope in return that her work may have an influence however slight in the present important crisis of drawing together the sympathies of two great divisions of the world whose aims should now if ever be united agnes blake poor End of section 0. Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. An American Poems, an anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Pan American Poems, an anthology by various authors, translated by Agnes Blake Poor. The Pansy, Esteban Echevarria, Argentina. I was but a humble flower, faint of odor, dull in hue, but the plaything of an hour, till a brighter caught the view, plucked perchance, if passer-by deigned on me to cast an eye. But the love-lorn maiden sighed, there is pansies, that's for thought, 
and my being thrilled with pride as a sudden change was wrought richer purple petals rolled round a heart of brighter gold yet i sought not to excel in the garden's guarded close though i breathed a mightier spell than the lily or the rose i could soothe the exile's heart doomed from all he loved to part i am born on lover's breast in the desert far away and his lips to me are pressed at the fading of the day when the lost beloved face fain his weary eyes would trace messenger to longing hearts when the rays of hope grow faint comforter in sorrow's smart like the relic of a saint such the blessed destiny that the heavens have given to me end of section one recording by eric metzler albuquerque new mexico united states of america two of pan american poems an anthology this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Brendan Nelson Weiss. San Antonio, Texas, December 2013. Pan American Poems, an anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Two, written on the Gulf of Mexico. Jose Rivera Indarte, Argentina. The windswept waves are rolling high. Our bark bounds o'er an angry sea. The storm is blackening the sky. But all my soul is fixed on thee. O oh, pray for me, thou gentle one, To him who rules earth, sea, and air, And moved by thy celestial tone, He yet my wayward life may spare. It was no strain of earthly love Which drew my being unto thine, It was a call from heaven above, An opening unto love divine. Thou art with me, where high or low, these widely wandering steps may roam, And all the joys of heaven I know Are visioned in thy peaceful home. Before thy presence crossed my life, Full many a wish strayed wide and far, To the poor gains of civil strife, The blood-stained laurels snatched from war, The treacherous lures of low desires, The breath of popular applause, But thou hast kindled purer fires, And oped my eyes to higher laws. Still bear me ever in thy heart, E'en though the burden bring thee pain. Tis agony indeed to part, But oh, tis bliss to meet again. End of section two. Three of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Pan American Poems, an anthology by various authors, translated by Agnes Blake Poor. To Rosas, May 25, 1849. Extracts by José Marmol, Argentina. Look toward the dawn and see the kindling east already radiant with celestial fire. Mark how the sun-god hails our country's feast as to the zenith he climbs high and higher. So upon Chimborazo's undimmed snows he shone upon that unforgotten day, when for the first time as his orb arose we hailed him on the twenty-fifth of May. Ye sons of heroes, gather on the strand where Plata rolls her silver waves on shore. Praise in united song that noble band, until your strains resound to Ecuador. The sons of heroes, tell me where and why, like wind-tossed leaves before the hurricane, from fatherland and fireside they fly to beg their bread upon a foreign plain. Bright sun of May, withdraw thy golden rays, nor look upon the land thou canst not bless. Recall no more the memory of those days, when thou didst smile on scenes of happiness. Rosas, in prison cells thy captives wait to greet the daybreak with a silent curse. There shall not lack this day to celebrate one feeble voice to raise itself in verse. Yes, I will curse thee while within my veins life's ebbing current yet may faintly flow. 
I pardon thee this dungeon and these chains. But for thy crimes to Argentina, no. End of section 3 Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Section 4 of Pan American Poems, an Anthology This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eric Metzler. Pan American Poems, an Anthology, by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. May 25, 1849. Extracts. Jose Marmol, Argentina. By Babylon's waters they sat down and wept, the exiles of old on a far foreign shore. They dreamed of the land where their forefathers slept, and sang the loved songs of their temple once more. I too, weary pilgrim, for long-drawn years, while these wandering feet through the wide world must roam, have prayed to the God of my fathers in tears, to bring me, like them, to my own native home. His voice came in prison, arise and depart. He opened the door of my dungeon's dark cell. He put hope and courage and faith in my heart, and taught me to say from the depths, it is well. When over an ocean of blood my frail bark before the black tempest was helplessly swept, it became in his mercy a sheltering ark, and in his protection I peacefully slept. And thus, when the twenty-fifth morning of May comes again, bright and beaming, my exile to cheer, I can hail it with joy and can thankfully pray to welcome it many and many a year. Brave hearts of my countrymen, yours is the power, for to you and through you the purpose is given, that shall surely be kept in the predestined hour, when tis yours to accomplish the purpose of heaven. I know not how soon there shall dawn on the earth the May that shall see the fulfillment sublime. One year or another shall yet give it birth. Our faith is in God, and our hope is in time. End of section 4. Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Section 5 of Pan American Poems, an Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eric Metzler. Pan American Poems, an Anthology, by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. In an album written below a picture representing melancholy. Jose Marmol, Argentina Sorrow's dark-veiled figure tear from thy album, fairest fair, in the morning of thy days. She is but a name to thee. On the sunshine turn thy gaze, brighter yet its beams shall be. Be the pages gay with flowers, freshly springing with the hours, songs on which thy voice shall dwell that no listener may forget, where love's promise seems to tell of a fairer future yet. Should the time e'er come, when grief craves in sympathy relief, and thou wouldst the page restore, seek no image drawn by art, thou wilt find one evermore at the bottom of my heart. End of section 5 Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Pan American Poems and Anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Bubbles by Pedro J. Naon, Argentina Dry leaf, dead leaf, down the valley blowing, All the rustling tracery of thy framework showing. Whither dost thou come from, 
whither art thou going on thy trackless journey wayward and alone thus i on the way of life like a shadow hasting breath of summer breezes but a moment tasting rougher winds of winter every fibre wasting feel them sweep me onward to a fate unknown dark mist chill mist curling o'er the river up the green banks creeping with a silent shiver rising now now sinking as the wild winds quiver like a palace in my dreams gauzy dim and thin there i trace a likeness to the unsubstantial pleasure magical illusion of some fairy treasure changing hopes and passing fears that the moments measure crowding round the wavering heart and restless brain within arrow of the upper air never resting swallow darting swift across and back beneath the azure hollow till the dazzled eye no more thy tireless course can follow wilt thou pause to tell us of the coming spring no thy silent motion sweeps on and on unending only now and then one moment earthward bending then again with skyward aim more and more ascending till my hopes have vanished with thy sable wing end of section six recording by eric metzler albuquerque new mexico united states of america of pan american poems an anthology this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org pan american poems an anthology by various authors translated by agnes blake poor the fugitive by pedro j naon argentina fair vision undefined and fleeting whose light foot hardly prints the lawn now here now there my charmed gaze meeting to be more quickly yet withdrawn a shadow flitting through the wicket a sunny flash upon the air where just behind the lilac thicket i catch a gleam of golden hair and starting at the passing splendor i lose it like a shooting star one dazzled glance alone i send her before she vanishes afar her silver laugh rings musically along the garden's winding ways i hasten down the shady alley where her white dress flits from my gaze i pour my soul lest she be near me in some old song beloved of time but only echo deigns to hear me and chill me with her mocking chime the dream is o'er i wait in vain but will she never come again end of section seven Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a Wimper Fox recording. All Wimper Fox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit WimperFox.org. Recording by Glenn O'Brien www.glenobryan.net Pan American Poems and Anthology by Ferris Authors Transferred by Agnes Blake Paul Peace by Florencio Valera, Argentina Written in exile in Uruguay, 1838 De fate un corpo sol de membri amici Fate un capo che gli altri indrisi e frene Jerusalem me reverata. Protect, O Lord, our glorious heritage. Now by fine aid delivered from the yoke of very a weary age. By never ceasing bounty we invoke to make us joy free. The garden guide our heart one remedy. Let it not fade, the young and tear shoot, in the odd breath of faction's withering blast, whilst but grasp to one fruit. Little humble grant and all fast. We are but yet newborn. Have we deserved the fate of states outworn? Save us, we pray thee, the temptations bear that our America's ambitions waits, and warn us of the snare that caught our sister of the stove of gates, dearer and proud of them, but now an outcast for the scorn of men. Send here the pair divine, concord and peace, 
laws of virtue driven from the west, which strife and hatred cease, and then our nation shall be doubly blessed. In laws beneath in shade, science and art shall prosper unafraid. Before the radiant or profane light, like sunlight slaying over ill and plain, will fight the ghosts of night, fighting superstition and intolerance fame. The faith of freedom born shall come upon the pinions of the morn. No more the brazen trumpet summons wild shall wake and tell all the south sea. The mother and the child shall rest at eve beneath the twilight tree. And from the spying fields, the peasant gave all his slavery yields. But now the poet's lyre exalts no more. Sally it answers to his bearing hand. Yet on the foreign shore, if I no pray for thee, my native land, for Argentina wings, no cause of hopeful wrong with silver strings. Speak a name tenderly, not to obey, but with the heart to pity and regret, and draw forgiving shade over the sins that we may not forget. For her there yet may be, a resurrection day we shall not see. Give her your prayers, sons of the Abbey East, when on the altar bounteous gifts you lay, on your thanksgiving feast, and in return will a grave for exiles pray, for many a current age, but tell the Lord our glorious heritage. End of section 8《Pan American Poems》An Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org.《Pan American Poems》An Anthology by various authors, translated by Agnes Blake Poor. The twenty-fifth of May, eighteen thirty-eight, in Buenos Aires. Extracts by Juan Cruz Varela, Argentina. Welcome to this hallowed day, welcome to thee, morn of May, in fresh beauty beaming. Dawn is blushing in the skies, waiting for the sun to rise, every flag is streaming. Purest white and azure blue send back each celestial hue to the King of Heaven. Every wish unspoken waits till he bursts the golden gates, and the sign is given. Then will echoing cannon roar all along the silver shore, where blue waves are playing. Every hand and every voice join together to rejoice. Every heart is praying. Happy tears the mother sheds, o'er her children's infant heads silent thanks bestowing. And the warrior, worn with strife, feels the current of new life in his pulses flowing. With his hand upon my head, thus an aged warrior said, morning proudly greeting. I who heard was but a boy, but I shared the old man's joy and my heart was beating. What maids were those of old, what songs, what flowers, how quickly ran the twilight's happy hours, how sweet with evening came the welcome rest, how safe the babe slept on his mother's breast, how bright the vision's treasured memories gave to gild the streams of the exhausted brave. But they are past forever, ever past, and I who speak today have seen their last. And now the dawn of May awakes once more over a silent town and lonely shore. No welcome greets the coming of the light. Each square and street is hushed like dead of night. In every house the closed and guarded rooms hold the oppressive atmosphere of tombs, and its pale inmates, trembling with each breath, hear in each random sound the threat of death. Some unknown spy may rouse the tyrant's power, his vengeance may descend at any hour. Perhaps a little later in the day some prowling negro band may wend its way, and barbarous songs and savage dances raise where once was heard the hymn of joy and praise. Why wonder? Tis a tale but too well known, how with success came fratricidal strife, and they who once had monarchs overthrown now cower before a despot of their own and quail with dread of the assassin's knife. Sons of my fatherland, shatter the chain that palsy and tyranny around you flings, and show the world that it was not in vain you broke the fetters forged by foreign kings. 
Recall your past of high immortal deeds, and pledge yourselves to do and dare again. It is the desperate venture that succeeds. Awake, arise, and quit yourselves like men. Fair city, throned beside thy silver gates, queen of the balmy breezes of the west, arouse thyself and know that fortune waits, even on the throb of one heroic breast. For what though death his purpose consecrates, tis by a hero's death his life is blessed. End of section 9 Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Pan American Poems and Anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Impressions at the Foot of Illimani. Mariano Romalo, Bolivia. Long our winding track has led by fair Chuquiapu's bed. But though beautiful the scene, this can never be our way. What we sought we have not seen. We have lost another day. For our path grows dark and steep, and the river still and deep. Still press onward up the stream, where our road may plainer seem. Round the column of grey rock, as we turn with breathless shock, flashes on us lone and high, Illimani in the sky. His eternal icy crest centuries of snow have driven. Upward toward the zenith pressed seems the stairway unto heaven. But of mortal foot the trace never marred that sacred place. Not the royal eagle's flight ever dared to touch that height. Here is where we long to tread, here we hail the Andes king. Yet the heart recoils in dread and in wild imagining. Can it be that here we are near our goal and yet so far? Where his brow so radiant glows, all illumed with life and joy, lie unmelted depths of snows, rash invaders to destroy wither with an arctic breath, clasp in an embrace of death. No, not such our thoughts shall be, not so will we gaze on thee. Blessing shalt thou be, and blessed, mightiest giant of the west. Down thy peak in rock-lined beds glide a thousand silvery threads, meet and part and meet once more, till a hundred cataracts pour all along each lofty wall. By their hidden mingling streams, bright and nameless flowers fall, such as we behold in dreams. But what climber from beneath dares to pluck the tempting wreath? Dearer on the slopes below soars the palm tree's slender frame, brighter the familiar glow pomegranates all in flame, while the song of forest bird rings upon the perfumed air, never yet so gladly heard, or so thrilling sweet as there. Onward yet, a blissful start of fresh gladness in the heart. Here is something in the scene shows where hand of man has been. Sure some little rustic farm nestles in the valley warm. Here the olive's measured line speaks the prompting of design, and the lemon's silvery bloom, clustering near her fruit of gold, shows that art has here found room to improve on nature's mould. Shall we stroll along the edge of this sheltering cedar hedge? there to find the peasant's cot. Better fancy who may dwell in this fair sequestered cell than perhaps to find them not, and some crumbling wall to trace like a ghost in this bright place. Day is waning and we may hear no more in safety stay. Even as we turn to go, night is gathering below, and his creeping shadow falls all along the forest walls. High above the king of day sheds as yet his lingering ray. But we would not have the spark that our devious path has shown leave us wandering in the dark, haunt of terrors yet unknown. Just a moment pause to raise one last lingering wistful gaze, where on Illimani's height blazes yet unfaded light, brighter than the glow of noon, brighter that it fades so soon. Tis enough that we have trod near the secret haunt of God, 
In the infancy of man so his simple thoughts began. Older, wiser, yet we will keep the heavenly vision still. End of section 10. Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Pan American Poems and Anthology by various authors, translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Marabá by Antonio Gonçalves Dias, Brazil. Note. Among the Tupã Indian tribes, the children with fair hair and blue eyes, who are occasionally born, are regarded as marabá, that is to say, accursed, and are usually buried alive at once. The poem describes the condition of a girl who has been allowed to grow up. Marabá In solitude dwelling, the loneliest of creatures, no color, no features have I of Tupá, and fair as a vision, my beauty yet raises no love and no praises, I am Marabá. My eyes are to sapphires from rocky mines riven, to azure rays sent from the dawning of day. They brighten like gleams of the blue summer heaven, they darken like blue ocean waves far away. But if one of our warriors to meet me advances, though dazzling thy glances, he murmurs recoiling, thou art Marabá, and dearer to me are dark eyes twilight seeming, bright eyes softly gleaming, through dewy mists beaming like eve's rising star my brow is as fair as the lily's white splendor as smooth as the sands of the foam-beaten shore the breast of no seabird more soft or more tender no thrice wreathed seashell more pure to the core but our young men regard me and turn away scorning though radiant as morning they breathe with a sigh thou art still marabá the brow that is bronzed by the desert wind blowing the desert sun glowing, their blushes bestowing, is lovelier by far. On my throat lightly bending, my fair head is swaying, as the cactus flower droops from its stem high above, and the warm perfumed breeze round my lips that is strained, bears a faintly breathed sigh like a message of love. But I love a form like a palm tree ascending, a proud head unbending, they say as they pass, not like thine, Marabá, a head held aloft like the palm's crested splendor, a form straight and slender to reign o'er our flowery forests afar. My long waving tresses float wide on the breezes, or fall on my neck in a rippling gold shower, and each sunny lock that the wooing wind seizes seems a bright petal shed from some amber-hued flower. But they murmur sadly, thy locks bright and shining, Thy long tresses twining in lustrous profusion are still Marabá. To me and to mine, shining hair deeply shaded, dark tresses close braided, ebon locks far more precious than golden ones are. And these sweet words my longing heart has spoken, to whom are they addressed? No warrior weaves his helmet with my token, my colors on his breast. Across the open door of my lone dwelling, stretches an unseen bar, and an unspoken curse is ever telling. Tis Marabá. End of section 11. Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Kay Hand. Pan American Poems in Anthology by Various Authors, translated by Agnes Blake Poor. To Liberty Extract by Francisco Manuel, Brazil. Awake, O Liberty, with joyful song, as now these thirteen nations do appear, whom thou hast joined together far and near, and join their willing hands and purpose strong, to break the chains that did their hopes ensnare. Philosopher Franklin seizes from on high, lightning from heaven, scepter from tyrant's hand, and at his glad command from Boston loud resounds the glad reply. 
and washington doth stand helping a trembling congress with his might thou liberty thou art his wall and shield as when full long ago on latin field fabius for anguish rome delayed to win the fight end of section twelve section thirteen of pan american poems an anthology this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by greg giordano pan american poems an anthology by various authors translated by agnes blake poor teresa by bruno seabra brazil stop and hear the wedding march from the church door softly stealing as we near the open arch louder and yet louder pealing what a blow the worst believe me that i've met in all my life but my senses don't deceive me and teresa is a wife i had always meant to please her and to say when in the mood will you marry me teresa for of course i knew she would now my chance is lost i see wreath and veil there's no mistaking how she's changed but then in me time no doubt some change is making faded are the flowers of youth perfume gone and color blighted nothing now remains in truth but the ghost of what delighted curses on procrastination this of all the vices swarm leads a fellow to damnation when he really meant no harm where's the little sunburned maiden with a smile for each and all when her shabbiest frock arrayed in she would hasten at our call what a hand she was for fun bubbling o'er with mirth and laughter how across the fields she'd run while we boys came lagging after see her now as pale and calm she sweeps on no swan more stately and upon her husband's arm how her white hand rests sedately i can wager he'll be jealous he is throwing i can see such a scowl at us poor fellows and the worst of all at me there's a little touch of warning mingling too with all his pride watching on her wedding morning every motion of his bride well your childhood days are o'er now you're married little lady you will gather grapes no more from the trellis long and shady no more from the topmost bough can you pluck the ripest cherries no more can you ramble now on the hillside after berries how at sunset down the mountain we would scamper skip and trip only at the well-known fountain snatching one delicious sip well that's past such talk is idle shabby frocks away are thrown you are coming from your bridal and in such a satin gown that long line of veil and train seems as if it never ended shall i ever see again anything one half so splendid all that never was to be passes like a fading vision spare but one kind thought for me from the height of your ambition proud of your new lord and master proud of your resplendent dress may it be that no disaster ever mar your happiness 
Still I cannot but remember One breath of the fragrant breeze On that mild night of December Underneath the coffee trees When I thought you loved me well Don't turn pale You need not fear me I'm not one to kiss and tell And I wish you joy sincerely why should any one confess when there was so little in it one brief touch of tenderness meeting parting in a minute but i quite grasp the position for now i've no chance of you with your ladyship's permission i may think of marrying too end of section thirteen Recording by Greg Giordano, Newport Ritchie, Florida. And American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Pan American Poems and Anthology by Various Authors, translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Folk Song, Merindim or Mulindim of the Brazilian Gypsies. The one here quoted was sung at funerals. All my living thou wast giving, my whole being came through thee. Thine the spirit, my soul merit, was the soul thou gavest me, like an echo that rejoices only to repeat real voices. As the flower of an hour gives a moment of delight, like star falling past recalling into everlasting night, so a fleeting glance was given as an angel sped to heaven. Bud of summer, early comer, fairest one where all were fair, fading blossom on death's bosom, pale and still forever there. I can call, thou dost not hear me, thy sweet voice will never cheer me. Magic numbers in my slumbers still repeat each vanished note. In my dreaming thou art seeming still before my eyes to float. With one throb of maddening pleasure I can clasp my heart's lost treasure. That departed, broken-hearted, sadly I lament again. Joy is banished, light has vanished, every breath I draw is pain. But I will not stay behind thee, in the land of death I'll find thee. End of section 14 And American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Pan American Poems and Anthology by Various Authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Love by Emogenes Irisari, Chile. Fair maid, believe me, love is like a lake whose crystal depths reflect thy brow of snow. The roses on thy cheek that come and go when in thy azure eyes the smiles awake. No passing winds the liquid mirror wake, the cool refreshing airs so softly blow, but hidden currents in the depths below the angry surface in an instant shake. Gaze then in safety from the emerald shore, nor launch thy shallop on the treacherous wave. Even the gentle touch of thy light oar may rouse the slumbering peril from its grave. Thy fragile bark is on rough waters tossed, the picture fades, thou sinkest, and art lost. End of section 15 Section 16 of Pan American Poems and Anthology This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Matt Zeisler, Plano, Texas. Pan American Poems, an Anthology by Various Authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. After the Duel by Santiago Escuti Orego, Chile. White and silent thou art lying, while thy lifeblood stains my sword. Dull and senseless I am trying to renew the round abhorred. Happy thou whom death has lifted to the everlasting life. Wretched I who have but drifted back to mortal scenes of strife. Nature's bond for both is riven, 
Mine the loss, the gain is thine. To thy soul is freedom given. I, the body's prisoner, pine. End of section 16. Recording by Matt Zeisler, Plano, Texas. Seventeen of Pan American Poems, an anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Pan American Poems, an anthology, by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Yesterday and Today. Narciso Tondro, Chile. Prone lies at length the statue once so fair, Headless and armless on the weedy lawn, Yet still some lovely curve shows here and there Through clustering ivy like a mantle drawn. The cracked, stained pedestal of ages tells, From every cranny lined with velvet moss, The hum of bee, the chirp of cricket swells, And silently the lizard darts across. How long ago by summer breezes fanned, Here stood the new-born Venus, fresh and fair, All palpitating from the master's hand, The last touch of his chisel lingering there. And surely this shall last, he proudly thought, Fixed in immortal marble is my fame. Just here, where human hand has surely wrought, Some crumbling letters may have spelled his name. End of section 17. Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Section 18 of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org Recording by Little T Pan American Poems An Anthology by Various Authors Translated by Agnes Blake Poor The Grayley by M. M. Mardiedo Columbia Far away a mountain swelling Dark blue on a pale sky Whose faint quivering light is telling That the sun has risen high Straight above he draws unto him all the splendor of the heaven. Darting on the lonely pilgrim, rays like red-hot laces driven. I would fly, I know not whither, but to breathe one cooling breeze. So far none can travel hither, from the mountains or the seas. But from yonder belt of wildwood steals a sound to memory dear. Thou art near, friend of my childhood. Loved, grayly, I am here. Thou art here, thou matchless river, Free and fresh all thou wilt then, Still the open-handed giver Of the drought of life to men, And I drain the breaming treasure Of thy silver rippling store, Tasting the uncoiling pleasure That my boyhood knew once more. Still the same course thou art taking, Wound that ever-fixed walk, unsubdued by tempest breaking, undisturbed by earthquake shook, to whose largest still are cleaving, ruins of the fortress vast, where I love to wander grieving over glories of the past. Race whose hands now still forever laid the wall and raised the dome, Still as gaily one sliver past your unrecorded home, Life and death fought here together, And the victory was with death. But free nature asks not whether she may draw her unchecked breath. She has buried human sadness under lavish wealth of bloom, Withering leaf and flower in gladness over the deserted tomb. And that wild street music winging breathes no echo of distress. Tis some hidden wood bird singing, but to tell his happiness. What cares she for passing sorrow, for the storm cloud in the skies? 
when on every bright tomorrow in new joy the sun shall rise what cares she if hearts are beating over hopes or cares or fears when fresh springs her steps are greeting in the external course of years man can never with his trying reproduce her wondrous forms never with her powers viewing lend a beauty even to storms let him then his pains assuring all his toil and effort cease and submit as i am doing to adore her work in peace end of section eighteen recording by little t section nineteen of pan american poems an anthology this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. recording by greg giordano pan american poems an anthology by various authors translated by agnes blake poor to washington by hartrudes Gomez de Avaaneda, Cuba. Thy virtues own no model in the past, no future age can boast a greater name. The immortal laurels of thy deathless fame, brighter shall bloom so long as time shall last. The track of patriot blood shall guard thy land, the marble of Siena pure and pale never to be obscured by envious veil speaks well thy nature simple yet how grand while fame recounts thy glories far and wide hero who snapped the chains of states oppressed and brought the despots strength and power low raise high thy head america in pride for him the cincinnatus of the west whom Rome might envy, could she only know. End of section 19. Recording by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. Section 20 of Pan American Poems, an anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Pan American Poems, an anthology, by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. The Hurricane Jose Maria Heredia, Cuba. Translated by William Cullen Bryant. Lord of the winds, I feel thee nigh. I know thy breath in the burning sky and i wait with a thrill in every vein for the coming of the hurricane and lo on the wings of the heavy gales through the boundless arch of heaven he sails silent and slow and terribly strong the mighty shadow is borne along like the dark eternity to come while the world below dismayed and dumb through the calm of the thick hot atmosphere looks up at its gloomy folds with fear they darken fast, and the golden blaze of the sun is quenched in the lurid haze, and he sends through the shade of funeral ray a glare that is neither night nor day, a beam that touches with hues of death the clouds above and the earth beneath. To its covert glides the silent bird, while the hurricane's distant voice is heard uplifted among the mountains round and the forests hear and answer the sound. He is come, he is come. Do ye not behold his ample robes on the wind unrolled? Giant of air, we bid thee hail. How his gray skirts toss in the whirling gale, how his huge and writhing arms are bent to clasp the zone of firmament, and fold at length in their dark embrace 
from mountain to mountain the visible space. Darker, still darker, the whirlwinds bear the dust of the plains to the middle air, and hark to the crashing, long and loud, of the chariot of God in the thundercloud. You may trace its path by the flashes that start from the rapid wheels where'er they dart, and the firebolts leap to the world below, and flood the skies with a lurid glow. What roar is that? Tis the rain that breaks it in torrents away from the airy lakes, heavily poured on the shuddering ground, and shedding a nameless horror around. Ah, well-known woods and mountains and skies, with the very clouds you are lost to my eyes. I seek you vainly and see in your place the shadowy tempest that sweeps through space, a whirling ocean that fills the wall of the crystal heavens and buries all. And I, cut off from the world, remain alone with the terrible hurricane. End of section 20 Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America Pan American Poems and Anthology This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand Pan American Poems and Anthology by Various Authors Translated by Agnes Blake Poor To General Flores, Conqueror at Minorica, Jose Joaquin de Olmedo, Ecuador how the infant eagle spurns all the perils of the air, while his heart within him burns after loftier spheres to dare, reaching in his upward flight regions entranced in pure unclouded light, till with transport he has won to gaze undazzled on the midday sun, and with his strength untried hopes mid the joys of heaven for ever to abide. Suddenly struck faint and blind, naked in the face of day, at the mercy of the wind see him falter on his way. Watch him shuddering descend on the long path that seems without an end, till all risks and perils past, he sinks into the forest shades at last, finding himself how blessed, safe in the welcome shelter of his native nest. So in ambitious youth my muse lured me in daring ways to run, and urged my untrained song to choose, temples and altars of the sun. Ever would my verse repeat the joys that crowned the Inca's lofty seat. In glowing strains would I retrace the peaceful triumphs of their blameless race. Of laws and faiths I told that the new world might learn, how gladly, from the old. As I reached the lofty sphere, striving yet higher to grasp, sounds of doom rang in my ear, laurels withered in my clasp. Down I sank, lost and alone, fading before my eyes the distant throne. In vain the call to arms rang through the nether world with wild alarms. It struck a deafened ear. I felt no love or hate, no hope or fear. Where contending oceans rave, freedom's youngest, fairest child, rose like Venus from the wave, heaven and earth before her smiled. Crowned with roses, breathing spring, she hovered o'er me on her pausing wing. The joy of all the western world found me with harp unstrung and banners furled. Not Union's deathless name could wake a thrill of triumph in my listless frame. But genius never dies, his breath rouses the dull deafened ear, wakes a throb of life and death, warms the ice-cold pulse with cheer. So it was now with me, the earth that had so lately hailed the new republic's birth, now with angry passions stirred, changed in a moment as at one brief word. And I awoke to see what had been, what was now, and what was yet to be. What has roused the savage horde, sweeping o'er the new-won land? Fierce rebellion waves the sword, lifts his poisoned cup in hand. Law and freedom he proclaims, golden power and vengeance are his aims. Toward the rising sun he calls, for safety on the unconquered Andes walls. And toward the setting day, on the Pacific's queen, urges his desperate way. Who is the chieftain, heaven sent, for whom an outraged people sigh? On whom all eyes, all hearts are bent, and all united voices cry? Strong as true, and brave as wise, sent for our aid and comfort from the skies. Faction before his glance gives way, like bats and owls of night at break of day, and at his magic name awakes from far and near the trumpet call of fame. Flores, the name breathes of delight, from every mountain top it sounds, Flores, it echoes from the height. 
and every hill and dale rebounds till waves upon the rocky shore mingle their watery voices with the roar as when the thunder shock scatters the shepherds and their trembling flock so at that one name's sway rebellion's gathering forces waver in dismay he has spoken and his voice bids every loyal heart awake warriors tried and true rejoice hastening his glory to partake where his eagle eye glances around ships on the sea and arms on land abound for genius calls and e'en creates the proud accoutrements of warlike states till like an eager steed the full-fledged waiting country trembles to be freed who the direful scene shall show in that dark opposing band blind fury passion's crimson glow urge on treason's coward hand there lack not signs of terror given to show the danger of insulted heaven shades from the gaping tomb that ghastly pale or blood-red rays illume and from the midnight skies from hosts invisible come piercing battle cries mark that dusty stifling cloud and the struggling forms within now more faint and now more loud comes the muffled roar and din there is mina rica there passion and anger fight with black despair too well the advancing hero knows that friends and brothers swell the list of foes he bids the tumult cease and offers them the outstretched hand and pledge of peace he makes no presumptuous taunt harbors no vindictive thought for the brave can freely grant pardon when it is not sought for these alas it is too late false pride blind hatred urge them on their fate the generous proffer they disdain and the door closes ne'er to ope again the hero draws his sword the mute sign of appeal unto a righteous lord now the battle fires awake mingling foes fight hand to hand rank on rank like waves they break fiercely clashing brand with brand friend meets friend and one must fall brother meets brother tis the lot of all the once green field beneath is heaped with every bloody sign of death the wounded raise their feeble moan but to be left untended and alone as the sunbeam from the cloud bursts withdraws and bursts again then a fuller radiance proud bathes with lustre hill and plain so the hero's lightning blade now here now there now hidden now displayed sweeps o'er the trembling field till all his foes are forced to fly or yield some for grace freely given pray and over those who fly his generous pity throws its sway hail to thee hero blessed of heaven thou arm thou bulwark of our land before thy sword our foes were driven behind thy shield uncrushed we stand a heavy price for peace we paid and now we look to thee still undismayed to guard our new one state science and law and art to consecrate to raise our flag again that it may float in pride before the eyes of men royal andes bow your head to salute the conqueror hail ye waves his welcome tread nearing the pacific shore where our queenly city waits to open wide her shining silver gates where our temple fanes are dressed with flowers for his name our brightest and our best all songs of praise ascend for him our people's chief defender leader friend end of section twenty one of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Pan American Poems and Anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. To Ch. by Augustine F. Cuenca. Mexico. I would twine a fitting wreath for thy fair and open brow. I sought violets on the heath, lilies in the vale below, and where richest roses breathe in the garden's radiant show. But where the freshest flowers seem springing, the poisonous nettles were stinging. Then I sought to please my love all the goodliest birds that sing, nightingales in shady grove, thrush and lark on soaring wing, and the snowy turtle dove ever softly murmuring. But I only found ravished nests lying where mother and nestlings were dying. Then I tried by rippling brook or where the ocean's billows swell through their rainbow flash to look till I found the longed for shell in whose closely clasping nook pearls of price must surely dwell. But the bright waves rolled over and over heaps of gravel and filth to discover. Then I plunged in depths of earth for the treasures of the mine, seeking gold that knows no dearth, where unnumbered diamonds shine, and where all I found of worth should be thine and only thine. But I woke from the dream lone and dreary, an outcast faint, shivering and weary. 
then i fought with destiny for the laurel crown of fame i would offer unto thee tribute of a glorious name thine the hard won prize should be but i never reached my aim and i am alone heavy-hearted strength courage and joy all departed now abandoned to distress broken health and failing powers not a hope my life to bless for its slowly waning hours not a gift on thee to press neither gold nor pearls nor flowers i swear by the powers above me i am poorer than job dost thou love me end of section 22of pan american poems an anthology this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by k hand pan american poems an anthology by various authors translated by agnes blake poor the murmur from the stable a poem of the epiphany ruben dario nicaragua Twas in the lonely stable whence the holy babe had gone, fleeing the wrath of Herod, and had left his cradle lone. Shepherds and kings had gone before, and none remained behind, but the gentle beasts of burden more true than humankind. The patient ox and quiet ass still chewed their fragrant hay, but spared the corner where so late the Lord of glory lay. Sad was their talk together, spite of the breath of love, like a warm perfume from the nest of the celestial dove surely the ox said do we know that he is lord of all yes said the ass tis he who yet shall save us from the fall save whom why all oh no what then alas the heavenly grace is meant but for our masters of the cruel human race but we can read the future it is our priceless gift to look behind the veil that they may not hope to lift our tranquil eyes can gaze beyond the breaking of the dawn and pierce the cloud of mystery or sacred secrets drawn we are dumb beneath the lash of the cruel human kind but we breathe our knowledge to the sun the moon the fields the wind and sure though low our lot may be he never will forget how we shared with him our bed where his presence lingers yet but meanwhile here we must be sad no happy and content so spoke the angel of the lord whose sudden swift descent upon the wild wind's rushing wings a flash of glory shed on the patient heads that bowed themselves above the baby's bed the day shall come for all of you to know redeeming love and hear the summons of the lord to taste the joys above for the humble service that so long and patiently was given the gentle animal shall join the ransomed souls of heaven the more that they have suffered here the more bliss shall they see and for you both yet greater the recompense shall be for you two who have parted with your lord your lowly bed and watched with love above him in bethlehem's humble shed who have given all you could without thought of gain or loss shall be the charge of him who shared the burden of his cross and on the golden hills of heaven for thus it is decreed saint simon the cyrenian shall lead you forth to feed end of section twenty three Four of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sherry Whitman. Pan American Poems and Anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Sonatina. Ruben Dario. Nicaragua. Tell me, lords and ladies all, what ails our fair princess, princess with the coral lips, fitting home of laughter. Can the crumpled rose-leaf be her sole distress? Pale and silent now she sits on her golden chair. From her lute no melody tinkles on the air. From her vase the fading flowers no more perfume waft her. In the palace garden strut the peacocks through the maze. The duenna babbles gossip, no one listens. The fool, a scarlet silhouette, his maddest antics plays. But the princess sees not, hears not, cares not in the least. She can only look and long toward the cloudy east, where a vague illusion of flitting sunbeams glistens. Does she dream, perchance, of the emperor of Cathay, or him who checked his Arab steeds in their prancing measure? 
just to catch from her blue eyes one celestial ray. Dreams she of the monarch of the fragrant isle of roses, of the sovereign whose realm Golconda's mine encloses, or the haughty master of Ormuz's pearly treasure. Ah, poor little princess, sad and suffering, princess of the rosy mouth only made for smiling. She would be a butterfly just let loose in spring, on light plumes to hover o'er the hyacinths of May, or a swallow to aspire to heaven on a ray, careless if the lightning flare be not more beguiling. Not to her the palace with its silver stairs, or the full and scarlet, or the lightly poised balloon, or the swans that glide across the lake in twin-light pairs. She cares not for the blossoms of the garden at their best, eastern jasmines, southern roses, dahlias from the west, northern violets cold and sweet beneath the crescent moon. Crushing is the weight of gold, dull the diamond's rays, princess of the azure eyes, once so bright with wonder. Palaces are prisons when the fancy strays, where the guards are watching every step one takes where the black battalion of watchmen always wakes, where the bloodhound never sleeps and the dragon mutters thunder. Sad and pale the princess sits in her inmost bower, princess of the golden hair, beacon of the nation. Who shall bring the true knight to the enchanted tower? Who shall find the destined one, the chosen one of all? He before whose conquering tread the spellbound gate shall fall. Pale and sad the princess waits for the heart's salvation. Wait a little longer, cries the white witch from the hills, she who seldom promises but is ne'er mistaken. Wait until the moon of May her silver crescent fills. Then comes the unknown hero from a far-off land, who guides his flying brazen steed with a victorious hand. He shall give the kiss of love, the dreaming bride awaken. End of section 24. Recording by Sherry Whitman. Section 25 of Pan American Poems, an Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Reisman Pan American Poems, an Anthology by Various Authors Translated by Agnes Blake Poor Homage to Dario by Artur Jimenez Pastor From La Nación, Buenos Aires, February 10th, 1916 Sadly mourns the fear princess while her golden bees, clustering together in the stillness of the sun, murmur faintly like the waves of enchanted seas. Knight and squire around her are striving every one, vainly striving to awake on her cheek the blush, soft as on an evening cloud the last sunset flush. Sadly mourns the centaur troop from the classic lands, suddenly arrested on some distant shore by the cadence of the waves, like a funeral band, till they cover all the marge and are heard no more, till the last faint ripple, with a sobbing breath, dies away in silence, and all is still as death. Sacred swans of poesy, snow white and snow soft floating heaps of slumber on waveless lakes afar royal train of peacocks with crested heads aloft such as pace majestic linked to juno's car or in versailles gardens step slowly one by one past the steps of pompadour's rose-heaped rose-hung throne floating vapors slowly rise and wreath wind-swept and pale, hiding arching necks of snow, shining crests of blue, sad and sweet the murmurs through the misty veil, till the poet's song resounds, the flowerless desert through, and but for a moment rings the sonatina's lay, 
Roaring winds and thunder, peals sweep it far away. The spectral archer of the northern sky bends his great bow across the sphere on high. Through the unmeasured realms of night and day, speeds his black arrow on its destined way. It strikes, but pierces not, the poet's breast. His empty quiver near him lies at rest and over him sinks slowly in the west the archer boy. Let no loud weeping chill the budding bloom that elves and nymphs have wreathed about his tomb. The gentle syrinx mourns his shortened years, and on his laurels pan sheds quiet tears. In the cathedral raise the exile psalm that through the transepts breathes like sorrow's balm, and in the tinted window rises calm, the archer boy. And now the band of those who loved him best follows him slowly to his place of rest, to the slow beating of the muffled drum. With heads bowed down and measured tread they come, pale and serene fixed in triumphant peace. His noble face bids lamentation cease. His only fitting requiem shall be the pealing psalm that tells of victory. The blazoned banners float above his bier, and from blue far off waters rises clear the swan song on the ear. End of section 25. of Pan American Poems, an anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Reisman. Pan American Poems, an anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Sighs by Etelberto Segarra Bayon, Peru. When first I saw her in her youthful splendor, bright as an angel lighted from the sky, my love unspeakable could only render the tribute of a sigh. Fearing yet longing for another meeting, I followed her light footsteps to God's shrine. She turned her head, her blush set my heart beating. The sigh was hers and mine. By worldly sins and cares my soul degraded. We met once more, my heart was cold as stone. Too well she knew her power to bless had faded. The sigh was hers alone. T'were long and hard for words to tell the story. Though tis but an old tale and often told, But there's a language sure as transitory That never can grow old. End of section 26 Section 27 of Pan American Poems, an anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. Pan American Poems, an anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. To Edison. Domingo de Vivero, Peru. In thee the spirit of thy native soil draws breath and stirs with potent, fruitful life. Thou, from the field of elemental strife, seizest the guerdon of thy noble toil. Franklin before, along the slender coil, called down the fiery sparks in heaven rife traced the quick ray 
like sharp dividing knife and to the earth brought down the lightning spoil and thou the living glory of thy race preservest for all time the spoken word defying ignorance's numbing trace despising falsehood's deadly withering breath the immortal tree of life thy hand conferred even on the edge of the abyss of death end of section 27 recording by greg giordano newport ritchie florida and 28 of pan american poems an anthology this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by greg giordano pan american poems an anthology by various authors translated by agnes blake poor the three epochs diego Maceos a cai peru when at the altar by my side you knelt a young and blooming bride it seemed as if the sun's bright ray brought all the glories of the day and now just as our first-born child upon her cradle pillows smiled the joy we purchased with our fears like the moon's softer ray appears and when dear wife at last we stand together on life's further strand a starry beam shall surely tell of that blessed world where all is well. End of section twenty eight. Recording by Greg Giordano, Newport Ritchie, Florida. Section twenty nine of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by K. Hand. Pan American Poems and Anthology by Various Authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. The Setting Sun. To Maria Travieso. Jose de Diego, Puerto Rico. The Latin sun is sinking in the west, with long and melancholy rays declining. On from the north a rival star has pressed, as clear as cold in bright effulgence shining. Dark eyes are fading in the luster caught, from blue eyes beaming with the light of thought. The rippling golden ringlets catch the breeze, the braided locks of jet are slowly falling. Before the roses fresh from northern seas, the pure pale pearl tints vanish past recalling. The soft voluptuous curves have passed away, that spoke a yielding heart, a nature tender. And now the daughter of the goth holds sway, a tall cathedral angel, straight and slender. Dark eyes are fading in the luster caught, from blue eyes beaming with the light of thought. But now how speaks the sun-enkindled heart, the spirit nurtured under tropic fire? Does that too shrink before the icy dart, of polar avatar advancing nigher? Maria, save thee gods of southern race, thou breathing image of love's glorious mother. While thy dark eyes light Aphrodite's face, the Latin sun shall sink before no other. End of section 29. Number 30 of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Eric Metzler. Pan American Poems and Anthology by Various Authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. The African Mother by Francisco Acuna de Figueroa, Uruguay. Tirege enfant de la rive africaine, qui cultive pour nous la terre américaine. 
différentes de couleurs, ils ont les mêmes droits, vous-même contre vous les armées de vos lois. Delil, malheur et petit, chant un. And hast thou sped upon the ocean wind, say, cruel pirate, hast thou come for this, not to leave one behind, to rob my humble home of all its bliss? Come back and look into my cabin door and find me there alone. Their parting footsteps will return no more. All of my own are gone, forever gone. Husband and children taken, and only I forsaken. Oh, bear me after them, thou iron heart, and to toil with them I will be thy slave. Or if death be their part, cast us together in an unknown grave. But why pray I to thee by prayer unmoved? Thou hast no children, thou hast never loved. Free waves their flag, the golden sun displaying, Celestial globe on skies of heavenly blue. The sportive breezes straying waft on our sight the wonder strange and new, while the relentless crew dart like wild beasts on weaker creatures praying. Darken thou, sun, thy fiery light, and die away in black eternal night. What see I here? His quiver and his bow shattered and useless on the trampled sand. My hero! Well I know they were not torn from unresisting hand. But these with magic art can grasp the lightning's dart and wake the thunderclap at their command. Some poor relief to find, so wailed in grief the mourner left behind. They heeded not her accents of despair, a feeble outcast worth no robber's care. And full in view with every sail unfurled, the eagle spread her pinions to the air and soared away into the western world. Chained in the hold beneath, the captives gasped for, for breath and spent their strength in vainly wasted strife, a groaning heap of mingled death and life. While from her hut under the mango shade, the childless mother and the widowed wife watched the tall poop on the horizon fade. End of section 30. Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America. Section 31 of Pan American Poems, an anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. Pan American Poems, an anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. Thou and I, Juan Zaria de San Marin, Uruguay. Like breath of roses opening, with every petal freshly curled, like haze midsummer nights will bring over the bright moon's lonely world. Warm as the ray of tenderness that sometimes from thine eye will part, when I could almost dare to guess that silently heart blends with heart, so would I read thy sigh. Like tears that come with scorching glow, drawn from the raging fire within, like voice of waves that ebb and flow on rugged rocks with ceaseless din, like cry of home returning bird who finds his nest robbed and forlorn, like the harsh note of anguish heard when from the lute its strings are torn, so mean I when I sigh. End of section thirty one. Recording by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida.
Section 32 of Pan American Poems, an Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Greg Giordano. Pan American Poems an anthology by various authors translated by agnes blake poor does she not feel juan seria de san marin uruguay in the clear heaven of thine eyes ever a limpid shadow lies not there the sparkle of the star that coldly dazzles from afar but as it softened splendor's rest, Reflected on the lake's calm breast, And drawn from pity or excess, Of a too conscious happiness, Sometimes a shining tear will show, On thy long lashes not to flow, But just a little sign to me, Of all thy wealth of sympathy. End of section 32 Recording by Greg Giordano, Newport Ritchie, Florida. Thirty three of Pan American Poems and Anthology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Pan American Poems and Anthology by various authors. Translated by Agnes Blake Poor. A Remembrance of Puerto Cabello, The Mangle, by D. A. Lozano, Venezuela. How lovely in the morning are thy azure waters sleeping, thy solitary islets, where reigns perennial calm, where flocks of snowy seagulls on coral reefs are keeping their hidden nests of refuge in an atmosphere of balm. Stretched in his light pirogue the fisherman reposes, And sweet his song is ringing by the lone and silent shore, Till with one dexterous motion the opening net discloses The leaping fish in silvery showers to swell his humble store. Or when more mystic beauty the midnight skies are showing, As through the sudden parting of the black clouds threatening bars, the crescent moon her tender light for one soft glimpse bestowing outvise the colder splendor of her bright attendant stars and grander yet the vistas of the wide encircling mountains when their untrodden summits are echoing back the storm and every lightning flash from the tempest's fiery fountains shows for an instant but to hide some strange fantastic form Perhaps such flitting glances set wayward fancy dreaming that some old ocean deity is visiting his shrine, the waved washed rock his conch shell couch with dolphin coursers seeming, and the murmuring song a distant chant of sirens faint and fine. And while outside the tempest is raving o'er the ocean, and the ship is madly driving on some lone and desert shore, Thy warm and landlocked waters swell with an easy motion, And gently glides the light pirogue at dipping of the oar. The homeward-faring mariner, whose bark so long returning, Upon some ragged reef like the gate of hell is driven, With what a hopeless longing his weary heart is burning For thy bright untroubled waters, like the sheltered port of heaven. Oft have I lingered by thy sleepy sea On the fair evening of an April day, And sweet the siren songs that came to me As on some stretch of snow-white sand I lay. I dreamed the innocent fancies of a child, Or me an angel lingered on its way. I woke with one light touch that vision mild vanished, But whence or whither who can say? Was it a dream of fortune or of love? A hope for all that earthly pleasure brings? Was it a heavenly message from above To draw me upward after higher things? I know not, but I felt my spirit yearn 
as with a longing for some good unknown, and ever since that image will return while I am on those happy shores alone. For fair at morn or eve are thy azure waters sleeping, thy solitary islets where reigns perennial calm, where flocks of snowy seagulls on coral reefs are keeping their hidden nests of refuge in an atmosphere of balm. End of section 33 Recording by Eric Metzler, Albuquerque, New Mexico, United States of America End of Pan American Poems, an anthology, by various authors, translated by Agnes Blake Poor.